South-South Cooperation has been at the heart of ANCTAD's work since the beginning. For nearly four decades, we have helped developing countries strengthen their cooperation and solidarity. There have been some big changes in the global economy over the last few decades that I think make South-South Cooperation more relevant than ever. The global economy is in uncharted waters. We are in a food and energy crisis. Global inflationary pressures are stifling developing economies. Financial stress is paralyzing some heavily indebted countries. The effects of climate change are raging across the world. Drought, fires and floods are striking economies that are still reeling from the COVID-19 shock. These combined crises represent unprecedented challenges for the vulnerable global south, and they are pushing the sustainable development goals farther out of reach. South-South cooperation is key to tackling these challenges and getting the sustainable development goals back on track. It seeks to build a common agenda of economic integration and solidarity among the countries of the Global South. A common agenda is essential to boosting economic diversification, trade, and more broadly, sustainable development, including fighting climate change. South-South Cooperation kick-started with the Bandang Conference in 1955. 29 countries from Asia and Africa gathered together to discuss common problems and ways to support one another in solving them. After the Second World War, these newly independent countries, also known as Southern countries, had urgent needs to advance on economic growth and social development. After the conference, the UN strengthened its support for developing countries. In 1961, the UN General Assembly adopted a resolution to initiate the first development decade. In 1964, the UN Conference on Trade and Development, ANCTAD, was established. ANCTAD's mandate is to support economic development in countries of the Global South and push for a more just and balanced international economic order. The group of 77 developing countries was also established to promote the collective economic interests of the South and enhance South-South cooperation. We have helped to boost their trade and investment opportunities, to create more and better jobs for their people, to protect their environments, and to build more resilient and sustainable economies. In today's globalized world, South-South cooperation is key to building a world economy and global governance that works for all. That is what South-South Cooperation is about. In recent years, progress on South-South Cooperation has been significant, particularly in four key areas. Area 1, South-South Trade. South-South Trade has soared in recent years. South-South exports in goods have totaled over 5.3 trillion US dollars in 2021 and exceeded South-North exports in goods since 2010. The expanding economic scale of the South has empowered dynamic South-South economic cooperation. The rapid growing South-South trade will offer more diversified growth opportunities for developing countries in the future. South-South cooperation is an important part of international cooperation for development, which can be further advanced in broader dimensions, including building solidarity, promoting economic integration, scaling up climate actions, and sharing policy experiences. Area 2, South-South Finance and Investment. Financial cooperation and foreign direct investment between developing countries have funded much-needed infrastructure, including ports, roads, and bridges. Area 3, South-South Industrial and Digital Cooperation. Countries in the Global South have cooperated more closely in recent years, also through successful regional industrial policy strategies. They have also initiated cooperation in the digital sphere. Area 4, South-South Partnership. Closer cooperation is also enabling developing countries to engage more in global policy debates and shape the international agenda. It is essential for countries in the South to strengthen strategic, political and economic partnerships 
and take coordinated actions without further delay. One urgent issue in which our countries are already cooperating but still need to do more is climate adaptation. Although many of us are on the front line of the climate crisis, climate adaptation is an area in which we have received limited support at the global level. It is an area in which countries of the global south can cooperate more amongst themselves. Cooperation, in our view, should build around three basic principles, namely scaling up of resources, enhancing policy space with the participation of our countries, advancing the reforms needed to rebalance the wider multilateral system. While much has been achieved, various challenges remain. Multiple shocks have further weakened the financial health of the global south. This may impact the financial resources available for South-South cooperation. More needs to be done. Developing countries need to push harder together to deliver on their aspirations for sustainable development. This will be key to realizing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Action Area 1 – Financing for Development South-South financial cooperation can help to mobilize complementary resources through various challenges for the Sustainable Development Goals. Action Area 2 – Industrial Development, Trade and Investment Promoting an integrated industrial trade investment strategy for countries of the Global South can boost industrialization and export diversification in many developing countries. Action Area 3 – Climate Change and Green Transformation South-South cooperation can contribute to the global efforts of tackling climate change, which has placed vulnerable populations under greater stress. Action Area 4 – Building a Strategic Partnership A bolder vision to developing more strategic South-South cooperation at the international level is central to more inclusive global governance. There's far more opportunities for developing countries to trade and invest with each other. There's a need to counterbalance the undue influence of uh, advanced economies at the multilateral level. And there's a real opportunity, I think, for South-South cooperation at the regional level to find new ways of mobilising uh, reliable long-term finance to ensure developing countries have the kind of resources necessary to meet their various goals when it comes to the impact of financial flows. Many developing countries don't individually have the capacity to manage those kinds of flows. And there's a real necessity and opportunity uh, with South-South cooperation to be able to forge new relationships to make them less vulnerable to external shocks of one kind or another. When you look at this bigger picture, when you think about the demands of meeting the Sustainable Development Goals. You need a more ambitious South-South agenda. Developing countries have strength in numbers and therefore strong South-South ties will make them more politically effective and will give them the ability to shift the multilateral agenda in a way that supports their needs and ambitions. South-South cooperation offers meaningful opportunities for developing countries to support one another in achieving the 2030 Agenda and prosperity for all.